Hi there. Welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In this episode, we're going to talk about federated reconstruction for matrix factorization, a novel technique for building recommendation systems. Remember, in our on-device recommendation episode, we discussed how to do recommendations purely on-device. On-device recommendation definitely has its advantages of protecting user privacy, reducing latency, and etc. But there's one limitation. We still need to collect some raw user data to train the model in the first place. Is there another approach that would allow us to train models for on-device inference, but without gathering sensitive user data at all? The answer is yes. Federated learning is what we are looking for. Here's one definition of federated learning. Federated learning is a machine learning setting where multiple entities or clients collaborate in solving a machine learning problem under the coordination of a central server or service provider. Each client's raw data is stored locally and not exchanged or transferred. Instead, focused updates intended for immediate aggregations are used to achieve the learning objective. To put it another way, Federated learning is a machine learning paradigm in which a shared global model is trained across many participating clients that keep their training data local. By keeping the sensitive raw data local, we can protect the user privacy while still being able to train the model. Let's walk through a cross-device federated learning example to help you understand how it works in practice. Let's say we first create a randomly initialized model on a central server and dispatch the model to a random subset of client devices. The client devices will then calculate their own model updates based on the local user data. This is usually done through on-device learning. Now the random subset of client devices we selected in the first step will send their updates to the server. The server will then aggregate the model updates together to produce a new model. This process is iterative and can be performed many times. At the end of training, final models are deployed to all client devices. Note that when the random subsets of clients send the data back to the server, they're sending only the model updates instead of the sensitive user data. In this way, the user privacy is preserved and the model is also trained. Now you understand how the cross-device federated learning works. Let me introduce you TensorFlow Federated, TFF. TensorFlow Federated is an open source framework for machine learning and other computations on decentralized data. It enables developers to simulate the built-in federated learning algorithms on their models and data, as well as to experiment with novel algorithms. Make sure to check out this link to learn more about TensorFlow Federated. Coming back to our recommendation system scene, by now, you have seen this slide multiple times and are already familiar with collaborative filtering with matrix factorization. In the matrix factorization setting, we want to learn the user and item embeddings, U and V, respectively, to minimize the mean squared error for the ratings. A naive approach is to send the user embeddings along with the item embeddings to the server for training purposes. But that doesn't preserve user privacy even with advanced privacy protection techniques such as differential privacy or secure aggregation because the user embeddings are specific to each user and any user embedding updates will reveal user-specific information by definition. So we need a better approach to keep user embeddings local. This is where federated reconstruction comes in. Federated reconstruction is a partially local federated learning algorithm which means only part of the model is ever aggregated by the server. It is also stateless because it does not require clients maintain a state across training rounds, which could be problematic in a large-scale federated learning setting. So with that background, let's see how federated reconstruction works in practice. First, the server stores and sends the global item matrix V to sample the clients in each round. Then each client freezes the item matrix V and trains its local user embedding U using one or more steps of SGD. This is the reconstruction step. After that, each client freezes its local user embedding U and trains the item matrix 
to produce an update delta v. Finally, item matrix update delta v's are aggregated on the server to produce the new global matrix v prime for the next round. So in this case, we are only sending the global item matrix updates back to the server and user privacy is being preserved. The federated reconstruction approach has been successfully deployed into Gboard, a mobile keyboard app from Google. Gboard uses federated reconstruction to personalize recommendations based on a user's typing history and has seen a roughly 30% uplift in recommendation click-through rate, which is quite significant. We have also open sourced the federated reconstruction code, which is built with TensorFlow Federated. You can use it to run the movie lens recommendation simulation to see how it works. Let's walk through some code to demo this. We first load the familiar movie lens dataset and split it into training and test datasets. Then we define the model, loss, and matrix functions. Get matrix factorization model function here returns a tff.learning.reconstruction.model. We won't go into the details of this helper function, but you should know that it defines which variables are globally aggregated on the server and which variables remain local, which is important for the federated reconstruction approach to work. We also use MSE as our loss and rating accuracy as our metric for training. Now we can define the training and evaluation processes with the model loss and metric functions. Note that we are using different learning rates for the optimizers in three different steps. There are hyperparameters you can tune for better performance. Lastly, we initialize the training process and enter into the training loop. In each iteration, we sample 50 training examples as a client data to train the model. At the end, we can visualize the training process and see the decreasing loss and the increasing accuracy. So that's it. We are able to leverage a novel federated learning approach, federated reconstruction, to train a movie recommendation model as we showed you in the quick code walkthrough. One last thing worth pointing out is that, just like the TF Agents Bandits library, federated reconstruction is a pretty generic approach, and the matrix factorization is only one illustration for this application. You can definitely do more with it for other use cases. But if you are looking to build sophisticated recommendation systems, federated reconstruction is another great piece of tool you can use, especially when you want to protect user privacy. With that, thank you for watching this video. Please stay tuned for more recommendation system videos in the future. Thanks.